College Football Hangover Podcast on I Live for Saturdays, the best college football channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at I Live for Saturdays, or as in the number four, like, comment, and subscribe. And I don't know what song introed us today. Uh, and we will be reviewing. And I know that sounds really boring, but yeah, I guess reviewing. I, I didn't have a better title. Well, I, might, I might come up with a better title, but we are reviewing the New York Six Bulls. As me and Omar said a million times, if you watch, which like no one watched, our Heisman live reaction, we said it like a million times, New York Six Bulls, which, yes, we know, it's New Year's Eve, New Year's, New Year's Eve Bulls. New Year's. New Year's Six Bulls. New we Year's know six. what it New is. New Year's Six Bulls. I don't know what That's is. what it is. I, I, well, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, we, we just kept saying it. I don't, we thought New Year's, New Year's Six, but Maybe, we kept saying New York I mean, Six. You know, the Heisen Trophy ceremony is in New York, and... It's something like, it had to be, man. It had to be something like that. I was... I it, It's definitely my fault. And obviously, the L's... No one else's fault. But, yeah. Um, to be honest, I haven't really watched much of the bowl game. Is much of the bowl games. Um, I, I, I think the L's just watched them today. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be up front. And, uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll notice that we really haven't been tweeting. And again, you know... Uh, we have lives just like you guys, uh, so yeah, we really haven't been watching. I, I think I saw Temple versus Toledo, um, that was kind of interesting, but a little boring. I don't know. Did you see any? I don't know. Uh, I, I saw uh, Baylor and UNC last night, which is uh, it was a fly- I don't know. I have no idea what high happened. Scoring, a lot of scoring. Uh, uh kind of boring for a high scoring game, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. I'm not. You know what? Uh, but yeah, I say I'm not surprised. I, I I love Baylor's offense and all their concepts, but they're not that fun to watch. Uh, they're not in Oregon where it was just high tempo and all this crazy stuff. And not that Baylor isn't high tempo, obviously, but Oregon they're mixing up of plays was so much fun to watch and it was so explosive. That Baylor will will score on like on like a deep throw, a 60 yard pass or something like that, which is cool, which is great. It's really efficient. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just it's not as appealing as the Oregon offense. That's all I'm saying. Um. So yeah, uh, we'll just do a quick review. By the way, me and the O got into some betting stuff, uh, and I totally I boofed it. He screwed me out of some money. I, I screwed all my out of some money. So I'm I kind of understand betting a little bit, and I, I like I said I understand the numbers of college football or the trends, what trends you have to look for now. Um, and I totally saw an easy money maker. I literally wanted to put my daughter's life savings on it, all of her money on it. And had I done that, he'd be rolling some dough. I really considered it. Uh, I pulled away at the last second. I said, oh, let's just get out of here. Get out of the bet. Get out of the bet. Because I was afraid. Um, and I screwed the O out of some money. I'm sorry. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, Snapchatting uh, you the, the the scores uh, during uh, during well, it was it was the, well, so it was the, the, the it was um, well, well, the story behind the it Weibull. is yeah the Weibull, the story, San Diego State versus uh, Cincinnati and a few weeks before the game Ricky came to me texted me I think while I was at work saying we need to put money on San Diego State it's a sure thing and I swear I thought like he was gonna go through with it and not you know flake on me and cost me x amount of dollars. Yeah, um, I think the winning was something like 40 bucks or something mm-hmm. if we put in 50 Um Part two of screwing Omar over. I get in with someone else to bet in some money as well for our, our new bowl game, um, USC versus Wisconsin. Let's, hopefully it works out. Hopefully I, I did get, I see a, a good trend here. Um, I, I'm taking USC. I'm taking the, the three and a half points. Um, and for, I didn't put Omar into the bet. Uh, he didn't get to put money in, so my bad. Yeah, that's my bad. So if he wins, I'm kind of uh, I'd be pretty pissed. Uh, I mean, not it's pissed, okay. Well, cause... I mean, not pissed, but you know, I'd be kind of like, what the he- you know, kind of what the hell <laughs> if you know he wins, gets in on some money here. Um, it's okay though. I think I'm gonna make up with another bet. I got I got some for for the O. I got something for the O. If I win this one, I'm definitely putting money on my next one because I think I see a real good trend. I see a trend of gambling addiction, but that's another <laughs> that's another story for another time. Um, so New Year New Year's Eve six bowls, which is one of my New favorite. New Year's six. New no, Year's six. Yeah, not New Year's six. No, no, not New Year's Eve. Now just, just New now Year's just Eve. Really just New dumb. Year's. Not just, just New Year's six. I feel really bad and really stupid. Uh, so the New Year's six bowls. 
Um, Houston versus Florida State tomorrow. Yeah, and by the way, this is December 30th. So tomorrow, December 31st. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, 11 a.m. The Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl last year. What a fantastic game it was. I love seeing great teams getting destroyed. TCU destroyed Ole Miss. Love seeing SEC fans cry. One of my favorite times of the year. Omar, who do you have? I'm going to pick Florida State. I think Dalvin Cook is just going to be too much. And you kind of saw it yesterday with uh, Leonard Fournette. You know, great running backs just, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter, man. When you're in college, you know, you're you're not going to stop these great running backs like Dalvin Cook and Leonard Fournette. And I, I'll i take uh, I'll take Florida State. I'll take Florida State. Houston has a great team, great head coach, amazing head coach, actually. But I don't know if he has the personnel to stop Dalvin Cook. Uh, so, yeah, um, so the numbers that I always look at, which I won't say, I don't want to throw out <laughs> my edge against everyone else. Um, they don't look, uh, there's nothing that, that pulls Houston out in front. Um, Florida State's personnel, I think, is too much. I think the best player on the field is Dav- Dalvin Cook. Um, arguably, the second best player is Greg Ward Jr. I know Jalen Ramsey's fantastic, but uh, Greg Ward Jr., Houston's quarterback, uh, he's probably the best pure athlete on the field, uh, besides, obviously, Dalvin Cook. Uh, I think he he will play in the NFL. I think he'll be a fantastic slot receiver, um, some sort of punt return or something like that, um, an X factor on a football team. Um, he's great, but Florida State's athletes, they're just going to be too much for Houston. Uh, I, I, I see a big win for Florida State. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Obviously, everyone wants to see a great game, um, but I, I, I see something like 40-20 on Florida State's favor, and, and, and probably the 20 gets an extra little touchdown from Houston at the end. So. That, that, that seems pretty fair to me. To be honest, I'm uh, brutally honest. That, that seems pretty fair. Shout out to Tom Herman. And at 3 p.m., the first college fo- football semifinal. And you know what? I never said this. That I'm not super excited about the semifinal. I don't know what's wrong with me this year about the semifinal. Last year's semifinal, those matchups got me so excited. I mean, they got me like really giddy, and I was like, "Oh my god, I cannot wait for these games to start." Um, this year, I mean, I like the games. But there's nothing that has me, like, really excited. I'm not, like... Uh, so, yeah, um, technical difficulties. But, uh, yeah, I w- I'm not that excited about these games. Um, though, I, again, I like these games. I really like these games. Um, but I'm just not as excited as last year. I think, I, And also, I think you can never you can never be the sequel. I mean, uh, the first original movie. You know, the sequel is never going to be that good. Um, it's not going to be as great. Unless it's The Godfather. But uh, <laughs> that's the exception to the rule. This is not the Godfather. This is like, this is like uh, Mean Girls too. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Uh, it's pretty bad. It's a pretty bad movie, and, and I guess it's really unfair because I am actually excited to watch these games, and I think they're going to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, if you've ever seen Mean Girls too, by the way, it's, uh, it's garbage. Don't even don't even attempt to watch it. Don't do not attempt to watch it. And you will lose time out of your life. I'm not joking. I watched it a year ago. And I feel I still want the time back. I'm not joking. You say you looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm being I'm being serious. Um, so yeah, first game tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, the Orange Bowl, Oklahoma versus Clemson. Omar, who do you have? I'm gonna go with Oklahoma. All right, Sooners, Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner. I I believe in Bob Stoops. Um, these two teams are. Pretty much over, over. Uh, pretty much, um, equally matched. If you really, really think about it, these two teams actually. And, and for that, you know, and in that case, um, you know, both of the games here are, you know, both the teams who are playing in the playoffs this year, both those teams uh, in each game are pretty evenly matched, you know. Um, but I'm gonna pick the slight edge, Oklahoma. I feel like it's gonna be a good game. Uh, but I'm going to pick Oklahoma at most, at the very, very most, by 10. Going to be a great game, though. Two great quarterbacks. We'll, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I love uh, a lot of Clemson, most of the Clemson fan base. I think they're fantastic. They're probably one of the top five fan bases in all of college football. Um, they absolutely love their team, no matter what. Uh, but I think Oklahoma is going to have a slight edge. 
Uh, I think the best player on the field uh, is Baker Mayfield, and I think Deshaun Watson is fantastic, but I think Baker Mayfield is uh, a much better player. And uh, from all the numbers that I see, um, Oklahoma has a, a slight edge, though I do like that, Clem- that Clemson, I think, is in the top five in, in sacks, which is fantastic. Again, sacks and turnovers um, is what you want to be. Uh, but Oklahoma's in the top 25 of turnovers, tackles for lost, uh, turnover margin. So uh, I- I'm going to take Oklahoma. And uh, unfortunately, I, don't, I, I just don't think Clemson can do it because uh, there's just so much against them. And at 7 p.m., uh, the Cotton Bowl, Michigan State, Alabama, which I'm, I'm really excited at about um, in terms of pure ground and pound. And I think that game's going to go by really fast, which is great. When you want to see a ground and pound game, you don't want to see a ground and pound game for five hours. You know, you want it to be a three-hour game, get in, get out, great. We saw a lot of hits. We saw a lot of running. We saw a lot of blocking. Great. Awesome. Defensive struggle. And yeah, again, uh, another game in these playoffs that, uh, like I said before, are pretty evenly matched if you think about it. But I'm going to give a... A slight edge to Bama. I'm going to pick Bama. I think their offensive line. Michigan State has a great defense. Don't get me wrong. They have an amazing defense. But Alabama's O-line is too I, – I, I feel like it's too much. I, I don't know if you could stay four quarters with that offensive line. And I just think that eventually they're going to wear him down and Derrick Henry is going to break a few tackles and we'll, you know, we'll have a lot of big runs in that game like he always does. And – yeah, I'm going to pick a, a very slight edge. I think uh, with Michigan State's running backs, they'll hang in there. And I think Connor Cook's a great quarterback. I think with them, they'll, they'll, they'll hang in the game. It's going to be a great game, but I'm going to pick Alabama. And uh, here's the thing about uh, Alabama. They're, they have completely changed their defensive philosophy. Um, they have changed their much more modern in today's, ga- today's game. Uh, I think Michigan State's also modern. Um, and, and they they look old school, right? They look old school. They they try to stop the run. They're really big. They're really tall, uh, but um, they're definitely a modern style of football. They 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 look for sacks and turnovers. Um, I think a big thing about this is that Alabama has been so good these all these years, and they've been so close, or they've won national titles, and without focusing on sacks and turnovers, this is the best Alabama team that focuses on sacks and turnovers. So a team that now finally gets it, that was always very close or was winning titles, this is the scariest team by far in the country. Side note, I picked Alabama to win the national title originally in our first video. Shout out to me. Shout out to me. Um, So I do have Alabama. Uh, I think Michigan State, modern defense, they're trying to do that. You know, sacks and turnovers. They're just not as talented. I don't think we don't we, people have realized this is not as good as a personnel Michigan State as they were in uh, back in 2013 or back in 2014. Uh, these last two years, this is not this this team is not that talented. Besides Connor Cook, Shelly Calhoun, they're really not that talented. And uh, oh, they have uh, a Cochran, uh their offensive line. It's very good, um, but. Alabama's probably got the best offensive line in the country. And, uh, again, what we, we've, we've said it before. What wins championships? Offensive line. Offensive line wins, wins national championships. Um, so, I think Alabama's the easy favorite in this game. I also pick them. I think they also will uh, end up winning the national championship. Um, so, we took out all the excitement out of the bowl game, out of the, out of the national championship, the semifinals. Um, but we'll finish up with on uh, January 1st. Still got some really great bowl games. At 12 o'clock on January 1st uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, the Fiesta Bowl, Notre Dame versus Ohio State. And this game's got a lot of people excited. Um, I don't know what's up with me, but I don't like Notre Dame, Ohio State. These, these to me, I don't like these these NY6 get bowl games. I don't know. I, I like them, but I'm not like last year. I was super excited for it. These are good. I like Notre Dame, Ohio State. I'm just not super excited about it. Um, Omar, chime in. Um, well, honestly, I, I got to agree with you. I'm not really excited about this Fiesta Bowl either. I feel like both these teams could have gotten better matchups for their bowl games. But 
I think I'm going to give an edge to Ohio State. I think the deciding factor will be Ezekiel Elliott. He will decide how, how well he plays will decide that game. And how many carries he gets, uh, obviously. Um, this is a, a weird matchup again, uh, and I think I, I realized why. Uh, I actually did a little bit of research just right now. Um, these defenses aren't very modern, and uh, I think what I, I, I kind of realize right now, I think I like modern defenses, um, sacks and turnover type defenses. I don't like that run, stop, run, stop, pass defense, let's knock the ball down and not try to pick it off, be safe kind of crap. Uh, uh, but I, I think, like, I agree with also with Omar. I think Ezekiel Elliott is is definitely the factor. Um, after Dalvin Cook and uh, Leonard Fournette, um, Ezekiel Elliott is by far the third best running back in the country. He's fantastic. Um, if Ohio State gives him 30 carries, which I would, it's his last game, might as well give him 30, 35 carries. He's in a wear down Notre Dame. Um, Notre Dame's fantastic. Obviously, they have Jalen Smith. He's going to be a first round draft pick. Uh, but I I definitely have uh, Ohio State winning the game as well. God, I hate agree with Omar. And then the granddaddy of them all at 4 p.m., the Rose Bowl. I, well, at least that's for Central Time. The Rose Bowl. This game I'm actually excited for. I actually like this game a lot. Again, there's another ground and pound team. I like this game. Omar. Yeah, and uh, uh, I agree with you. Um, I really, really like this matchup. This is probably like... Uh, by far the game I'm most excited about for the um, you know for the big bowl games and I think I'm gonna give I think I'm gonna give Stanford a slight edge I think it's gonna be I think this game will go into overtime but I think this I think I'll give Stanford the edge you know if this game goes to overtime I'll be happy this is the game I want to put money on and uh, hopefully I can repay the big O uh, uh, Stanford, I mean, yeah, Stanford is a seven seven point uh, favorite over Iowa. I think that's crazy. Uh, if this game goes into overtime, we more than likely win the bet. Uh, so if o, the O wants to go, go up with me, put some money up with me, uh, try to win this bet. Uh, but I think Iowa does have the slight edge in this game, and I love Christian McCaffrey, but I don't, I do not believe he's seen a defense like this. Um, I think it's a very underrated Iowa defense. Uh, this defense is very modern. They will get sacks. They will get turnovers. That will frustrate McCaffrey. I think that will get him off his game. I think he'll hit 150-some uh, total yards, and I think he'll run a lot. But I think this defense keeps the clamps on him. He won't get that 250-type yard game. Um, I think Iowa will ground and pound run the ball. I think Brotherford, C.J., their quarterback, I think he'll be very solid. Um, and I like Kirk Ferentz over David Shaw in this game as well. I think he's a better head coach. Though I like I like David Shaw. I think Kirk Ferentz is, is a better coach. And I think that that's what wins their game. Sacks, turnovers, Kirk Ferentz. Um, McCaffrey getting uh, the clamps on him. And I think Iowa wins a slight edge, maybe a field goal. Wins it on the last second. I, I, I want I want to see that, I hopefully. In the last game, and which is really weird, I guess it's just like kind of tells you the whole story of this this NY six bowl games. Uh, Oklahoma State Ole Miss at seven thirty p.m. in the Sugar Bowl, which is probably the the le- the most lackluster Sugar Bowl I've ever seen. Um, it's really weird, and you know both these teams are here because of technicalities. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, but it's just the way it is. It's crazy how both these teams had a shot at winning a national title this year. A very serious shot. Both of these teams. They had a shot to win their conference. If Ole Miss stops that 4th and 25, everyone keeps saying that, you know, against Arkansas, they win. It's over. They win the, they win the, the West. They go to the SEC championship game. It's not Alabama in the, national champ, in the semifinal. It might be Ole Miss. They, all they had to do was stop Arkansas on the 4th and 25. Um, uh, but, yeah. Lackluster Sugar Bowl. Um, Omar, what do you think? Uh, I think I'm going to give a... Um, I think I'll give a slight edge to um, to Ole Miss in this game. I feel like uh, Swag Kelly uh, could get it done. I, re- I, I do believe in, I do believe he can get it done. Uh, this defense is going to be difficult. But I feel like, you know, he's got some top-notch receivers. And, yeah, I, I feel Ole Miss will win the game. 
Oklahoma, Oklahoma State wins by 35. Um, there's just all the numbers. Really? Yeah, I think it's exactly the same. Um, Ole Miss still hasn't learned what modern defense is, and in bowl games, that is almost everything. Uh, that's, that's a fair point. That's a fair. You might that is, you might have changed my mind. Yeah, that is almost you might have changed my everything. Mind. But I I could still see Ole Miss winning the game though. I could still see him winning. I don't. I can't see them. I mean, maybe it might be similar to the Sugar Bowl two years ago, uh, three years ago, I should say, uh, or was it two or three years ago with the Oklahoma and the Alabama def- uh, Oklahoma versus Alabama Sugar Bowl when uh, I guess Alabama wasn't modern enough to stop Oklahoma. Yeah. And stop a, a quarterback like. Uh, uh, it was uh, Trevor Knight. Trevor Knight, yeah. yeah. Who's, I mean, our backup. So, I mean, you could see the differences in styles, how like how different styles could be. I mean, if an Alabama defense could let Trevor Knight do that, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Oklahoma State wins big. If not big, they win. So, I, I, I pick Oklahoma State. I don't think Ole Miss can keep up with uh, Oklahoma State, uh, especially with the Kandichi brothers. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with them. You know, psychologically, I, I pray for them. Uh, oh, I hope all the best wishes for them. But psychologically, they're not all there. You know, one of the brothers I think fell out of a, a, a two-story building, a hotel, almost killed himself. But he's now he's fine. So it's it's all this crazy stuff that's going on. Their best players aren't aren't a hundred percent. Swag Kelly's a good player, uh, but I don't think it'll be enough. So I, I think Oklahoma State and they've got athletes. You know, people forget that Oklahoma State they recruit really well. They recruit really well. They recruit Texas, too. And they recruit Texas. So, um, yeah, I got Oklahoma State. So, Omar, what are the chances Chip Kelly um, goes to Virginia Tech? So, and the Hokies with Babcock, with Babic, my bad, whatever his name is. Who cares? He blocked me on, on Twitter. Uh, he says, sorry, Fuente, peace out. I'm hiring the Chip Master. What are the chances? What are the odds we, we get him? About the same odds as you guys have winning a national championship ever. That stings. <laughs> Fuente will take us to the promised land. If not, Chip Kelly will. I don't know, man. I don't think he's going to college. See, you sh- I don't think he's going back to college. I really don't. I really don't. I, hope I think he'll go to Tennessee and he'll reunite with Mario and he's going to tear up the NFL. Right? I, yeah, I think that's the dream, and I think that actually might happen. Yeah. Dreams have been coming true, by the way. These dream scenarios, if you look back in like NBA, this ever since... Um, the decision with LeBron and all the sports, all these dream scenarios have like, come true. Um, now whatever you say can happen is possible. I feel like I feel like if Chip Kelly could find a GM and a team in the league that he will respect enough, you know, to listen to and have you know take you know and let him do do the off field signings and just have him coach. Chip Kelly will flourish in the NFL. I honestly believe that, and th- and that was his problem in Philadelphia, man. He he, he tried to be too much like Bill Belichick. Yeah. That's what that's what happened. He wanted to be like his boy. It's not his offense. It's not his defense. It's what happened in outside. Personnel. Yeah, personnel. outside of the field. His signings, in personnel, his signings, things like that. Everyone wants to be an Alex Ferguson. They want all the control. They want to sign everybody. They want all the youth system. They want all that. They want all the control. They want to hire the freaking plumbers, you know. But you're not gonna be that. You're not everyone is is blessed to be Bill Belichick, you know. So, uh, so yeah, that's it. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at I Live for Saturdays. Four is number four. Omar, sign off. Peace. Peace.